My father-in-law Gilbert's favorite saying was, let's throw a tent over the ranch and call this a circus. I guess today that sentiment holds true even 10, 12, 15 years later, as I like to think that I know what I'm doing, but at the same time, it's very obvious that I don't. Uh, today's weekly vlog is going to be just a little bit different than what you've seen in the past because uh, all of my filming throughout the week was actually corrupted. Uh, I won't say if it was by computer hands or by my own hands, but either way, we've lost four days of the weekly vlog. So today it is Friday and we're going to try something completely new and something we've never done before. Obviously, when we film the weekly vlog, uh, I film five, ten minutes from each day of the week and compile that at the end of the week for you guys on Sunday morning. Uh, this week, we're actually doing it just a little bit differently. And, and the main reason that I wanted to do this differently is to show you guys um, that it's not just five or ten minutes per day that happens on the ranch. It's an all day long experience. So. Today, you are gonna get, today and tomorrow, uh, you're actually gonna kind of follow me around for the entire day. I'm gonna edit that entire day together. What, what we have going on uh, is a whole lot. We're actually coming into winter, if you can believe it. Next week, we've got 10 inches of snow forecast. So we're gonna be getting ready for that this week. We're also gonna be testing more of our uh, shipping uh, containers and that kind of thing for shipping beef across the United States and a whole lot more. I know that uh, a lot of it's gonna, gonna kinda go around the snow thing though because we've got a lot to get done over the next couple days to get ready for the snow next week. So you get a chance to come along with me, you're gonna come along with Jeff, you're gonna come along with, uh, with Aaron, and we're gonna see what everybody's up to on the ranch and how we basically tackle a Friday and a Saturday. So that's all coming up. So get ready and let's throw a giant tent over the entire place. First stop this morning is actually over here in the sale barn. Uh, our hunters who got a chance to film with this week, and of course you're never gonna see it, uh, we are gone. They left uh, this morning, about four o'clock this morning. So the sale barn or slash hunting barn is actually unoccupied until uh, Sunday. We have another uh, group of hunters coming in, four guys from North Carolina coming in. And uh, they'll be taking over the hunting barn here and uh, getting set up for their antelope hunt next week so right now we've got a little bit of a break in between hunters which is great because there's a lot to be done i think blonde cow here and lefty and and uh showtime need a new bail but we are going to be moving cows around here in the next couple days too so i'm going to hold off on that there's still a little bit left in there for them um, Lefty will actually go back to the steers here in the next uh, today or tomorrow and we'll be bringing steers back in sorting off heifers and we'll actually because of the storm that's on the way and we'll explain this later but we're actually going to be bringing cows back home and that's mostly for their own safety the other thing that we've been doing is actually and I worked on this this morning is I merged our chicken flocks uh, we had one flock of chickens that were less than six months of age they were separated from the older chickens they are actually now all merged within the chicken house that was as simple as just taking down a barrier in between their two areas but now they're out and about and they're all together they all seem to be getting along i'm going to duck inside 
and make sure that uh, there isn't any catastrophes or anything like that happening uh, with the older chicks and the new chicks. Goat area over here, which you can watch on the webcam. Uh, not the inside, but you can see the outside. Hey guys. Hi. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, so the little chicks are still, some of them are still over here. They're waiting for their door to open, uh, which is not going to happen today, and they have to go out the other door. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of make them move over in that direction. Come on, kids. No, nope, go over there. Yep. Go out with the big kids. Yeah, there you go. We're solving the confusion of the chickens. Not the smartest animal in the world, but... And it looks like everybody is out of the chicken house. So this morning I already gathered eggs, but I'm gonna take a quick look through here and just see if anybody laid one this morning after I came in. It doesn't look like it. Uh, it's supposed to be up in the 70s. Hey, what are you doing in here? No, you go out. It's supposed to be up in the 70s today, so uh, that'll be a nice day to kind of get a lot of stuff done. Tomorrow, I think we've got rain in the forecast, and uh, that might make things a little bit tougher, but it's okay. We'll figure it out as we go. We're going to be helping Erin out in the garden. She's got a lot of picking to do. She has a, a fall basket um, that is going out to people that get the Edible Prairie Projects baskets. And so I know we've got a lot of pork chops, um, some steak, or not steaks, some roasts that are going in there as well. We're going to be helping out with that and getting those all set too. So we'll talk about that when the time comes. In the meantime, um, I'm going to duck inside, grab a little bit of breakfast, and then we'll be back out to work. Well, they do say it's the most important meal of the day. I got roped into cleaning a little bit, but not really roped into anything because I live here. So I can help clean the house a bit, but it does put us a little bit behind. I'm on my way down to start moving cows. Um, also, Erin just pulled into the shop here. We're gonna see what she's up to. Is she's, I think she's stocking the farm store. Are you stocking the farm store? Yes. Ran out of carrots, and I have an order for 20 pounds of beets. So. Oh my gosh. I'm working on that. So these are all the carrots you pick. Yeah. There's more out there. It's just this carrots for today. <laughs> Today's carrots. And this is 20 pounds of beets. So Aaron's got to get this stuff done for farm store. So we're gonna pull another team effort here. I'm gonna work my way this way if I can. There we go. And I am going to top beets, which basically means rip the top off of the beets. So I'm gonna work on that for a few before we get down to the cows. once a day, sometimes twice or three times a day, we like to come down and take a look at the cows. We can usually do that when we're caking um, is one time that we can definitely get it done. But as the weather starts to change, we have to do it more often. And also uh, with this storm on the way next week, we want to make sure that we get the cows a little bit closer. Not closer to each other, but closer to home where we can keep an even closer eye on them. Right now there's over a hundred cows out here along with their calves, so putting our total numbers up over 200 animals. And a few years ago we had a storm in October that turned out to be a blizzard. And in that blizzard thousands upon thousands of animals were lost because the calves and the cows got turned around, couldn't figure out where they're going, couldn't find shelter, um, couldn't find uh, anywhere to hide out from the storm. And a lot of them actually uh, suffocated from so much snow 
uh, just blowing in their face and, and they couldn't breathe and all of that. So across Wyoming and South Dakota, thousands of animals were lost and we really don't want to see that happen again. So that's why um, we decided to, to bring the cows home and in order to do that, I'm not going to come down, I'm not going to uh, push them with horses or four-wheelers or anything like that or even, even bean over here. But I am going to open up gates and what that allows them to do is they work their way home over the, the next couple of days. So it's what, it's Friday today. Uh, the storm is supposed to hit, I think on Tuesday, if I remember right, Tuesday or Wednesday. So that gives them, you know, what, five days to work their way home, four or five days. So opening the gates is really all it's gonna take. In fact, once the weather starts to change and the cows can tell that the weather's gonna change, I guarantee you they're gonna work their way home, but you're gonna have to watch next week's vlog to see if it actually worked because uh, not a whole lot we're gonna do right now besides just open open up the gates. In fact, that's why I'm wearing this t-shirt. Professional gate opener. It's my professional gate opener t-shirt. So our first gate to open is actually the gate that leaves a uh, majority of the summer pasture. Now, like I said, the cows are about a mile or so away. So hopefully, once they figure out this gate is open, they'll start working their way home. But there's no guarantee they're even going to find out this gate's open, so we'll find out. that I've got all the hay all the gates open that lead back to a hay field which will be a good place for the cows to stop on their way home grab a bite to eat and then we'll let them back the rest of the way so um, I guess we'll come back down later maybe check them out see if they're moving at all see if anybody's coming this way if they're not we can always get, grab some cake and kind of give them a head start or at least give them a push in this direction so now we're gonna head back home where I'm sure there's a lot more a lot more waiting for us. Cows are done, Jeff's working over there, getting some paint on the fence. Uh, we've got, it's Friday, so farm store is open today. So I'm sure there's a lot to be done there. I know that we have to stock beef. So here we go, winter food basket distribution takes place tomorrow, actually right here on the ranch. Uh, people are gonna come out and pick up their food baskets. 
We have 18 bags here. In each bag, I have to put four pork chops and one roast, and then find room for it to go back into the freezer. So uh, that I'm gonna be working on here for a little bit. So the big thing is that we have 10 steers and five pigs that are over in Sturgis for processing. They'll be coming back to the ranch here next week. So we need to make some room in these freezers anyway. So a great way to do that is to help out some folks with some beef. And, and uh, also we have a, beef, a pork sale like I going on in the, uh, in the farm store and uh, everything else. So lots of stuff going on trying to get rid of some beef and pork, make room in the freezers. We're gonna be doing a little bit more of that today. I think I've gotta do some organization and stuff. But first I gotta get this figured out. So four pork chops, that's 72 pork chops total and 18 roasts going out with the, uh, the fall or winter food basket. I don't know what it's called. I should ask Aaron when I see her. But um, yeah, we're gonna do that now. It's time to go get the farm store open and uh, get everything unpacked and get it ready to go. So I guess uh, we'll go do that. And if this is your first time here in the farm store, I'm gonna give you the same spiel that I give to everybody that comes in on their first day. Everything in the farm store is raised right here on the ranch, aside from the maple syrup, which comes from some friends of ours in Wisconsin. Uh, other than that, everything is raised here on the ranch. T-shirts, I guess, probably not so much. Uh, even the soaps, these come from pigs, uh, lard, and beeswax from bees that are raised right here. So lots of stuff here on the ranch ends up here in the farm store, which is the way it should be. So it's arts and crafts time here in the shop. To give us a hand is our old friend. This is ranch hand Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi. All right, Jeff, here's what we're doing. Um, we've got a hot knife here. We've got a tape measure. We've got our square and we are gonna be simulating some shipping boxes to hold 10 pounds of beef or whatever we can fit in them. Okay. So we've got 12 by 12 boxes. We're gonna be making liners for those boxes out of styrofoam. One box is gonna have dry ice. The other box is gonna have cold packs. We're gonna check them tomorrow and see what they look like. Check them the following day and see what they look like. And hopefully they make it in two days to our imaginary destination, which is the shop. Slowest shipping ever. We're shipping from the house to the shop and it takes two days to get here. 48 hours. Yep, no doubt. All right, so here's what I got. I figure we can use these as a workbench. Um, so we have to build two. Got a tape gun. And then this is just DIY styrofoam that you get at Home Depot. The styrofoam bother you? <laughs> like that. nothing else. <laughs> okay. Uh, tape measure. So, so, okay. Oh, look at that. Like butter. Okay, so this will be our bottom. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, Jeff, it fits. Uh, You're going to hate this whole day, man. Yes, I am. All right, where's that tape measure at? Cool. All right. Make sure I get Jeff in the shot here when I do this. <laughs> hey. Hey. There he is. All right. Okay. We've got somewhat of a box. Then we just need that lid. Look at that. Perfect. Holds us just right. Uh, lid off. So this one, freezer pack one. We'll put a freezer pack in the bottom. Ten pounds of hamburger. Two freezer packs of our lid fit on there. Hold. Yeah. Cool. All right, now we just do the same thing. Dry ice. Put it in the bottom or top? If you were told it goes in the bottom, then I would. Who told you that? The internet. Well, if it's on the internet, it's got to be true. <laughs> Get me started. Yeah. All right. So just yeah, put but that in the bottom. That doesn't make sense to me, but okay. For like, yeah, insurance purposes. And tape it up. Twenty pounds. Oh. Twenty point six five. There was no point. Yeah, there was. There's no point. I didn't see a decimal. There never is a point. I'll let you look at this one. I know what the problem is. 19.66. Oh, there it is. Amazing. So the, uh, the ice packs are actually lighter than the dry ice. Okay. So it was a pound of dry ice. No, because there's two ice packs. There's two ice packs in there, yeah. So. A half a pound of dry ice. Well, a half pound more of dry ice. Math. <laughs> Aww. Why didn't we put you in a box? No, this is s'more. He can go in a box up there. He's sweet. Okay, so that's it. Um, Aaron's got winter baskets. What are we calling these? Fall baskets. Fall baskets. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be picking a lot of veggies. Well, most of it's picked. I have a couple of things that need to be picked, and then I have to dig potatoes for the farm store uh, before it rains. So oh. I'm going to do that tonight. Okay. But I have to pick chard and scallions before 11 o'clock tomorrow. Okay. Well, we'll probably be helping with that as we continue with our whole day in the life of in two days. We have um, to go put the farm store away. We're going to go put the farm store away because it's closed now. Yeah, it's Somebody has to pick up Mackenzie from horse riding lessons. Oh, yeah, you go do that. And uh, I'll work on the farm store. In five minutes. And uh, we'll come back. Do you want to open these tomorrow and see how they're doing? Then seal them back up if they're doing good? Yeah, we can. Okay, so we'll take a peek at these tomorrow, see how they're doing. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We're not done today. I am. <laughs> they are. We have work to do still. <laughs> Story of my life. We have potatoes to dig. Let's go dig potatoes. All right. Hi guys, welcome to Saturday here on Our Wyoming Life. Very drizzly, uh, about 50 degrees out here this morning. Uh, the ducks and geese are doing ducks and geese things behind us here.
and we're heading into the shop where today is the fall basket pickup. Uh, folks are going to be coming out to pick up their baskets directly from the ranch, including beef, pork, and a ton of vegetables. Um, also, we've got a whole lot more to do. The rain has kind of let up here for a little bit. We've only gotten about a tenth of an inch of rain, but it's just a really, a really, really slow drizzle. So we're going to duck inside the shop and take a look and see what Aaron's up to. And then, well, we're going to continue along with our day. Hi guys. Hi. By the way, if nobody's ever met him, this is Jordan. Jordan works for EPP alongside Aaron here. Aaron's actually an employee of her own nonprofit, which I think is goofy. Um, it's not my nonprofit. I don't own it. Exactly. It's not how it, it was works. your idea. It was my it's like opinion. if you went and started Walmart and said, okay, you guys just go ahead and do that. That's just how nonprofits work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, do you feel better today about uh, where you're sitting here? Yeah. And uh, what is this that you're doing here? Well, so, so that's a, that's a very unorganized table of all the produce that they're getting. But I have to take a picture for social media, so I'm I'm well, social social media. What is that? Can you explain that to us, please? <laughs> the Facebook. <laughs> the Facebook. Um, I'm taking a picture for Facebook. So, and for us to just use for like next year's promotional. So, of course, I'm like making it look pretty. All right, so this is everything that they're gonna get in their basket. Yep. Okay, so walk us through it then. Okay. Carrots, rainbow chard, scallions, honey, eggs, potatoes, cabbages, beets, onions, a bunch of winter squash, pork chops, and a beef roast. Wow, that's a lot of food. It is a lot. When do people start showing up? Uh, two people have already been here. Nice. We start at 11, we have 15 minutes. Whoever said social media was easy, big fat liar. You have to deal with ladders and climbing and distances and things. These, are the, these are the things, yeah, the lighting's not great. Can you uh, send me that picture so I can show everybody what it looks like? Well, I gotta edit it. Okay, edit it yes. and then send me the picture. Well, okay. Thank you. I'm gonna go check cows and see where they're at. I can hear you just fine. Uh, do you want to ride with me down to the cows really quick? Yeah. All right, guys, if you remember from yesterday, I came down and opened up some gates. It wasn't that long ago. It's going to be in the same episode, so it's not like it's, you know, a long time ago. For me, it was a long time ago. For you, it was just a few minutes ago. Um, we are uh, hoping the cows are moving their way this way. We're going to take a look. But uh, I brought Jeff along with us just because... Um, this will be your first stretch of cold weather since since April and uh, a lot of people are kind of wondering how you're gonna handle this will be your first full winter in Wyoming yeah yeah so you were here in April you did fine you froze but you did I mean you lived through it obviously and you'll live through it again but the big question and inquiring minds want to know um, if you're looking forward to winter at all here in Wyoming it won't be my first severe winter if it's severe. I've, I've weathered winters. Uh, Northeast Pennsylvania has some serious winter and I've lived there for 10 years, so. And I have my clothes now. April, I didn't have any winter clothes. Awesome. All I had was summer clothes. So it was a little bit miserable. Um, but now I went back home and got my winter clothes. So yeah, I'm ready. Very cool. On the agenda for today, um, we have to get the cat, well, get the horses moved across the road and back to their original pasture. They've been on our side of the road here for the last um, couple months or so. And then we are going to move some steers across there as well. And hopefully these cows are moving up. So we'll find out where they're at and we'll let you know. Oh yeah, they're up there. They're, 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 they're back up in there. Oh crap, they're about as far away as they can. <laughs> yeah, they went so the wrong direction. <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, we came down here looking for these cows. They are uh, damn near nowhere to be seen. Uh, but, we can see a few. We're kinda, we kind of went up here to a high vantage point. You guys aren't going to be able to see anything, I guarantee it. But, as we look down that way, Trust me, they're down there. They look like sagebrush, but 
um, they are down there. Uh, so a uh, real disconcerting thing happens when you come down and you can't find the cows. It's like, I always say, it's like if you're uh, at the park and you uh, you look up from your book or your phone or whatever and you can't find your kid. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. So we've been driving around down here for now about 15 or 20 minutes uh, looking for the cows and we finally found them and they were uh, where Jeff had pointed out um, where I thought it was sagebrush. Jeff was right. It's a bunch of cows. But, you know, honestly, they're kind of the same color. So they are about as far away from where they need to be as they can. I think this very back corner where they're at, as at, on the road, not as the crow flies, but I think it's almost seven miles back to the home ranch, so, or to the, to the shop. So we have to kind of come up with a different plan. We want to have these guys back home by Tuesday. So I think what we're going to have to do a little bit later on today is fill up the back of the gator with cake, get some cows attention and bring them um, back home. Uh, if you're familiar with the place at all and you've watched a lot of videos, the wooden windmill is now way back there um, and we're past that. The wooden windmill is about six miles from home. So we are um, heading back around this way and there appears to be a number of cows. Um, I'm guessing all of them. I'm hoping all of them. Uh, they tend to stick together this time of year. So uh, back up in here. So they are way back about as far as they can go. The other thing is that there's a bunch of coolies and highs and lows and stuff out here. So I'm guessing they're all out here. They're just all hidden around. So uh, later on today, you want to load up with some cake and see if we can get them to, to move a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we are going to head back home, and our next project for today is to get the horses moved, and I think we can knock that out pretty easily. All right, quick change of venue. We're now in the gator and heading out to get the, the, uh, the steers, the, uh, the horses, but I did notice the steers are right here, so we might as well, after we get the horses moved, which are, the horses are right in that general area, steers are up back here on this hill uh, we might as well just bring the steers to the lot yep. and get them locked in so we can get them moved across the road also i don't know if they're all there but it looks like a majority one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and there's only what 14 over there so something like that so we should be able to find them slippery uh the horses we are going to be walking across the road so we don't have to put them in a trailer and they're not going too far so here they come Pyro and Bria Jeff's gonna grab some halters for them we're gonna get them haltered up and take them across the road hey guys how are you having a good day Hi. Good boy. Yeah. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. So this is Hyro. Hyro is a draft paint mix. He's about seven years old, and uh, we've got we've had him for a few years. He's uh, the only horse that I can really ride. Uh, Bria's uh, not really that much of a riding horse, but he's able to to be ridden. In fact, the kids ride it more than anything nowadays, so. You ready to go back to your pasture? You had enough of this, Jazz? Okay. How you doing, Jeff? Oh. Well, this is Bria. Bria is a quarter horse. She's about nine years old, and uh, we got her here on the ranch a few years ago. She had a partner with her. His name was, or her name was Rusty. She unfortunately passed away. So Bria is very, very codependent. Um, she won't go very far without uh, a horse or somebody else with her. So she's also like a giant dog, but uh, we aren't able to ride her, unfortunately. So, okay, you're gonna grab this and this. Can you get both of them? Yeah, sure. So get them. 
and don't let them take your fingers off. So Jeff is going to start walking them towards the gate, um, and I'm going to head up and get that gate open now that we have the horses secured and we don't have to worry about them taking off on us. So Jeff is going to start walking them up that way. And really, we're just taking them right across the road um, into another pasture, but we are going to be crossing the highway with them. It's really, you know, for a, for a horse, it's fine to cross the highway. We normally put the cows in a trailer when we take them over, but I think these guys will be just fine with walking across the highway with us. Like we're going in the shed. I did close that gate, right? I'm oh, <laughs> messing with you. <laughs> oh, that was funny. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, goodness. That was funny. Jeff thought the gate was open here. This gate right here. Jeff thought it was still open, and I didn't tell him any different. Huh. <laughs> That's how it's going to be. Did your heart start beating uh, a little did. bit? <laughs> it did. That's fun. That's fun stuff right there. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, let's... Uh, those steers are down there just begging to get in. Let's so let's get it. those guys in. And then we'll take care of a couple things over here in this corral. We'll get them some food. And then we can get those steers moved over here too. Okay. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we took a little break from lunch. Things outside went from bad to worse. Uh, our weather is going south here very fast. In fact, I just checked the forecast. They upped our snow fall estimate for Wednesday to 11 inches of snow in one 24 hour period. So it's gonna change 400 times by the time we get there, but it's not looking good for the home team. All right, Jeff is out here somewhere. I'm not sure where he went to, and we're gonna track him down. We're gonna go bring those steers in, load them up in a trailer, and get them moving. So just be a few minutes, we'll have something happening. Yeah. Hey, I found Jeff. He's out here uh, enjoying the uh, beautiful Wyoming sunshine. Uh, we've got our corrals here, trailer up there, steers over there. So we've got to somehow converge the uh, the three of them we have three heifers also that we're going to be working with those three heifers are going to go in with blonde cow lefty's going to come out and go with the steers and go across the road so a little bit of uh, uh, musical cows 
happening, <laughs> but uh, we'll get it figured out as we go. The big thing is, how are we going to get the cows moved in? They did follow us uh, with the with the gator earlier. Jeff doesn't think that's going to work again because they're now eating grass. So we're probably going to have to take the four wheelers out and actually move them into the ground. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right, so we're gonna bring them in through that lower gate down here, so down along the fence. Okay. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, guys. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. There's one coming up behind us, Jeff. Come on, girl. Or boy. There, dum dums. Come on. Go, go, go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Well, we made it into the corrals. Sorry for all the rain on you there. We need this one open, right? What? We need this one open? No. We just got to get Lefty out eventually, but if we open that one up, then we'll get Blonde Cow mixed in with all these Yahoos, so. So what we can use is actually use the octagon to sort. So, if I open this up, you bring me four or five, and then I'll start sorting them off in the octagon. This is the octagon. Right now, it's the rainy gon. Close that really quick. Go out that way. Good kid. Girl. All righty, kids. Who do we got here? Make the corner. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it looks like. Maybe. Maybe ten. I don't know. Let's see if we can get them in.
Good job, Jeff. That was too easy. You gotta quit saying that, man. <laughs> Slippery? Slipperier. He's slipperier. Yeah. Yeah. You know, actually, if you want to ride back there with them, can you get me some uh, <laughs> some footage? <laughs> you sure? You don't want to do that? Uh, I, I mean, you I could get in the bed and look to the window. <laughs> All right, where do you want to drop these guys off? You want to put them back towards, maybe towards shelter? Back down towards the barn, maybe? Yeah, if you want to drive that far. Yeah, you know, we got nothing else to do. Nowhere else to go. Time to dump the steers. I don't think it's raining as much on this side of the road. I think you're right. Okay, so this one you gotta undo that. You still have to undo that. Now it's gonna be a little harder. There you go. And then stand off to the side, press that. Grab this. Hey guys, come on out. Oh my gosh. Is that it? Is it? Nine of them. Okay. Cool. All right, that's done. Let's go home. The steers are saying the same thing. Let's go in the shed. Get out of the weather. All righty. Looks like we're. Uh, I think we're going to be done for the day, honestly. We got the steers moved. Heifers are in with blonde cow. Horses are moved. Erin got through her fall basket, which we didn't even get a chance to see how that went, but I imagine it went pretty well. Uh, the only thing we have left hanging over our heads right now is actually the boxes that we put together yesterday. We're going to check and see how they're doing. All right, if you think back to yesterday or a few minutes ago, uh, we packed up two boxes, one with dry ice, one with freezer packs. It's now been about 24 hours. We're gonna cut them open and we're gonna check the temperatures of the meat and see which one is staying colder. Now, technically, if we were doing two day shipping, they still have another day, but this will help us uh, kind of figure out where we're trending towards. So you got a knife on you? All right, Jeff's gonna cut open the first one. This is the cold pack. Go ahead and over up, Jeff. Except for that styrofoam. Oh, evil stuff. Okay. Styrofoam comes off. Got our handy dandy. So the ice pack is at 42. Meat's still frozen. Yeah. And it is at 39 degrees. So it's thawing, but it is still frozen. Oh, not quite solid, but still cold. Okay, we'll let that one ride till tomorrow. Okay. okay. Next. this one whether we flipped it over I guess we could flip it over now and try it the other way so in here this is the dry ice one it's still 38 degrees yeah, still oh. see crystals on the yeah. yeah this thing still frozen solid let's see where we're at here 30 degrees 
So dry that dry ice is helping for sure. And, and our box isn't even full, as you can tell. Uh, we still, we've got a lot of empty space in here. So the more we filled it up, the better off it would be also. We were just working with a 12 by 12 box here. So um, with our insulated liner and dry ice, obviously we're looking a lot better. The big problem that we have right now is dry ice availability. And that's due to a CO2 shortage, which is due actually to a uh, lack of production in fertilizer, if you can believe that. Uh, fertilizer, uh, CO2 is actually a byproduct of the production of fertilizer. You're, you're looking at me like I'm crazy, but it's true. I've never heard of this. Yeah, so CO2 is a byproduct of the uh, manufacture of fertilizer, and fertilizer plants are shutting down because of trucking, and they can't move the fertilizer efficiently without charging it on the lake. So that is rolling downhill, and eventually, you know, everything comes down to food at some point. So uh, whether it's this, the, the dry ice or the fertilizer itself or the trucking, everything's affected by this whole mess that we're going through. So guys, dry ice looks like it's gonna be the way to work. We're gonna have to work with this, work around it. Um, we've got uh, um, some insulated bags on the way that will actually go in here so Jeff doesn't have to cut out the, uh, um, the, the cardboard for each and every one. And then of course, or the, the styrofoam. And then uh, we have some different box sizes too to work with. So we've got a little bit more testing to do, but we're hoping to be shipping here pretty dang quick um, and start getting rid of some of the stuff in these freezers. So stick around, more on that coming. In the meantime, go check out our website, rwomenlife.com. You can get beef jerky on there and that, we just throw in an envelope and off it goes. Speaking of which, I got a bunch of orders packed. Yeah, yeah you wanna come inside and pack sure. orders? It's good inside work. It's good inside work, you're right. Alrighty guys, thank you very much. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life. Say bye, Jeff. Bye.